know that a block in the blockchain is made up of many specific transactions. And we've looked at those transactions individually. Now let's look at detail in detail at what the block itself looks like. Well, the block is generally consists of a number of different transactions together and then it's sealed by providing a nonce which creates a digital signature using the hash 256 algorithm. So what does a block actually contain in it? A block contains several things, not too many. It contains, first of all, uh, a number, which is the version version number of the block. So what is what is the um, uh, code uh, that you're using to represent this this version? You know, just like any other software release, version one, version two, version three. Um, the next thing that you've got after that is you've got um, the hash of the previous block. So the the name. Uh, we'll say the name of the previous block. Because each block includes this name of the previous block, that's why this is generally called a blockchain. Because each block in the blockchain has got a line in it, which is the name of the previous block before it. And that's how it's linked together over time. And that's how you ensure that um, one set of transactions is always building on all the previous transactions that have come before it. Okay, after that we have something which is called the Merkle root. And the Merkle root is just a digital hash that summarizes all of the transactions that are in this block. So it's a signature of all transactions. So you can think of it as taking a hash of all the transactions that are in this block so that you know that those transactions have data integrity and you can check to make sure that the transactions that you think are in the block um, are by validating that the signature of the transactions matches your Merkle root. Merkle root is a specification of how to calculate that signature. Okay, the next thing you've got is you've got the time at which this block was mined. You've got a, a difficulty level. And this says, um, how many zeros are we shooting for at the front of our signature? And this is going to be verified by anyone that wants to accept this block as whether or not it's appropriate given the previous block, the current time, and how, what our difficulty target is according to our algorithm. All right, the last thing that we've got is we've got our nonce. And the nonce is the bit is, is, an, is a number which we choose that's going to cause the signature of this to start with the right number of zeros. Okay, so in addition to this stuff, this is the block header, we also have all of the transactions below it. So what we should be able to do then is we should be able to go online and we should be able to look at a given block and we should be able to verify, just like the algorithm does, that when you take all of these elements together and you um, do a hash of them, you better get something that starts with a whole bunch of zeros, indicating that this is a valid block. The valid block consists of this information, there's a reference to the previous block, and there's a reference to all the transactions that are in the block. So let's go online and see if we can um, validate this with tools that are available on the web. Okay, we're online now looking at uh, the block uh, as it's actually in the blockchain. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our favorite transaction so far, which is the transaction in which I sent from my local client to my Coinbase.com account 0 0.0015 Bitcoin. So if we go over and we look at that transaction, what I want to show you is that uh, the properties of the block in terms of the nonce and the hashing hold true. So this was the transaction that we um, saw that we conducted earlier. And if we look at the details, uh, we can see the aspects of the uh, transaction that are on the blockchain up here. We can also see the block that it was included in. And if we click through on that, we can get the hash of the block. And then we can go over to um, blockexplorer.com and get the raw version of it. So here it is. Um, this is the raw details of the block that we um, have been talking about. And we've already talked about the transactions. And so what's different about the um, block than just the transactions is that the block contains all the transactions. So here, okay, here is the block. And you can see that this first transaction here is the Coinbase transaction. So that's the one that the miner receives. And we can see that all these different fields that we talked about are up here. So here's um, the hash 
of this block. So that's the name of this block. And you can see that it starts with a bunch of zeros. And those zeros should be the SHA-256 hash of the data in the block, including uh, the version number, the hash of the previous block, the Merkle root, which is a hash of all of the transactions that are in this block, the time at which this block was mined, the number of bits of difficulty, which are appropriate for how long it's been since the last time a block was mined, and then the nonce, which is the bit of information which causes the hash of this uh, header to come out to be zero. Now, one of the things that we said about the way that this hash should work is that it should be very, very difficult to find the nonce that causes uh, the beginning of that hash to be zero, but should be very, very easy to verify. And so what I wanna do is I just wanna go through live here and show you um, that it is kind of easy to verify. Uh, it takes a little bit of expertise, but we're gonna do it live in Python. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, uh, we're gonna construct a string, which is all of this information concatenated together. Before we concatenate it together, we need to um, change the format to the format that's used by um, the blockchain. And then what we should do is we should see that this hash ultimately is what we're able to get, um, the one at the top there. And then we can verify that the miner did in fact provide the correct nonce. All right, let's see if we can do that. Um, the way I want to do that is I want to bring up a um, window here in which we have Python running. Python's an interpreted computer program that's going to help us to run uh, the program here that we want to use to verify it. And we'll start with the version number. And the version number is two. Okay, that's the first thing we need. Uh, and then the next thing we need is we need uh, the hash of the previous block and that is going to be, we'll call it the hash of the previous block, it's in big endian formation and we'll grab that right here and set a variable to that. The next thing is we need the Merkle root uh, big, in big, the Merkle root in big endian notation. There we go. Add that in there. All right, and then we need the um, time, and the time is going to be right here. And we need the number of bits of difficulty, how many zeros we need here, and we need to know what the nonce is. And the nonce is here. Okay. So now we have all of the different bits, the, all, we have all the different aspects of information that we need in order to calculate the hash. And now what I'm gonna do, do is I'm gonna walk through, I'm gonna convert them from the version that they're currently in into the version that we need in order to construct uh, the hash. And I'm gonna do that by cut and pasting some code. So I'm gonna convert version into, uh, what happened here? I'm gonna convert version, sorry. There we go, version into version little. I'm gonna uh, transfer the hash block into correct hash block format. I'm gonna correct the, correct the time and make the time into the correct time format. This is uh, something that you can do to validate that the signature is correct. I'm gonna convert the bits into the correct format for the bits. I'm going to correct bits as a two-step one. I'm going to make, okay, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to correct them, we need to put the nonce into the format that we want to use the nonce in. All right, now we need to put all those things together. That then becomes the header. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert, put all those things together into one string. Uh, what did I do wrong? I forgot to do the Merkle root little. Let's try that again. Put the Merkle root, all right, let's try that again. Connect, correct that and make the header. Okay, so this is the concatenation of all the data that is in the header right now. And this is what we're gonna take, th that's the string, and this is what we're gonna take the signature of. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna convert that into a binary format. And then this is where we take the signature. 
And let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to fork the function. Okay, and so here you can see we're taking the SHA-256 hash of the header that we just created, and then taking the hash of that, and then when we convert it into a version that we can read, we should see, there we go, and it matches what we have um, up here. So the name of this block is what we calculated here. And you can see that I did that manually, and it wasn't too bad, it didn't take too much time, and a computer could do that instantaneously. So if you give me the nonce, then I can validate that you correctly calculated a signature that is of sufficient difficulty very quickly. But to actually find that nonce is very hard. So that's the structure of the so that's the structure of the Bitcoin block. And um, that's the technical details of it. Um, you put the transactions together with the block, you seal it up, and then if, you ca if you're the one that finds the um, nonce that makes it, you put it out on the peer-to-peer um, -peer network and everyone else can validate it and see that it's correct, and then that gets put into the chain and gets built on. And that's how the block gets constructed.